All right, guys. So originally I intended on uh, doing a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create this specific camera, but last second it kind of dawned on me that it took me about an hour to create this and to do a step-by-step -step tutorial would just add an additional maybe 30 minutes to it. And I thought that would be a little uh, mundane and lackluster to do so, especially considering the fact that this is generally comprised of uh, a giant rectangle primitive and a cylinder. So I thought it'd be more beneficial and you guys would take away more knowledge if I just explained my process and what to look for when generally creating uh, a model inside of Fusion 360. All right, guys. So before approaching any project, what I typically do first is first decide what the model is going to be intended for. Is it going to be used for 3D printing, video game development, animation, uh, portfolio shot, concept, so forth and so on. And depending on what the use is, uh, I definitely tailor my model around that. And with that being said, this particular model wasn't used for anything except for practice and maybe to get a good screenshot because uh, I just wanted to see what I could do in one hour, to be honest. And this is what I came up with. And as you can see, it's nothing but a giant rectangle with an attached cylinder. And the most intricate part on this is probably be the cylinder. And I'll just show you guys how quick it is to create this. So I, I created a sketch first. So let me just hit this drop down menu. And I created this rectangular outline of the lens. And I'll just revolve this really quick. Hit on new body. And also, I'll click this face here and I'll create a sketch off of this. It's literally just this simple. I'm going to go to modify, offset. I'm going to offset this edge here. And I'll offset it by about this much. I'm going to press pull this inwards to create a cut. Another word for Boolean operation. This looks fine about here. So now I have that cutaway area. And also, I'll pull up another sketch that I created. So this thing is literally just Boolean, Boolean shapes. <laughs> That's all it is, literally. So you see, it's pretty much already done already. And to get the extra detail on here, and this is what really catches people's eyes, the little things. And I'll capitalize on that a bit more here in a second. So let me change this camera from perspective to other graphic, because that's really annoying me. So I'll go to create pipe. And I'll create a pipe from this. And instead of having it on cut, I'll change it to new body. And the reason I made it a new body instead of making that cut is so I can duplicate it later on. So I'll just control C, control V. And I'll copy it to about here. I'll do it to here. And I'll create one more pipe. Well, this is just an example, so I'll, I'll leave this for now and I'll just combine these two together. And we have these little cutouts that you see here. And to get this this shape right here, these 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 it's just a pattern. And for those who've been using Fusion more than a day, you know how to create that. So I'll just create a sketch on this plane here. And I'll use the line tool and I'll just draw a line. The line is so powerful in this program and I think it's underrated. I think people uh, just don't see it for the value. They don't value for what it, what it is and what it can do. So I'll just create a pipe from this. And instead of having it on cut, I'll change it to new body. Okay, now go to create pattern on circular path. Grab this body here, and for the axes will be any ring on this model. So you see it wraps around it, it patterns around the axis. So I'll change it from three to 100. 
you can already see what it's doing. And to get that cutout shape, I'll just combine these like I did earlier. So I've got that. And then I'll hold shift and select the last body. And it'll select all of them. Ensure the operations on cut, hit OK, and we have our pattern. And let's just hit A really quick on the keyboard, which is the hotkey for appearance. Let me just drag a material. And I'm also going to change it to faces instead of bodies. Just so you guys can see how, how simple this is. Because when I said I made it in one hour, I had a couple people message me and they just didn't understand how I did it in an hour. And you guys can see within a couple minutes, we already have this much this, this much done already. It's literally that's just that simple. So the next thing I want to kind of touch base on are how to go about creating uh, custom decals using Photoshop and how to apply them in Fusion 360. Now these are the decals. Decals are these little um, text stickers that you import. Now first things first, I'm going to open up Photoshop. Now in Photoshop, I'm going to create a new document and I'm going to choose 800 by 800 pixels. Most people choose 500 by 500, but 800 gives you better resolution. And I usually unlock the background layer and I'll grab the paint bucket tool and I'll just paint that black. Now, once that's done, I'll just create a new layer, grab the text tool, and I'll just type something like Fusion 360. And I'm going to disable the background layer. That was just for a reference. So I can see my text. Now I'm just going to go to File, Export, Export PNG, save it to a location. I'm just going to name this Fusion 360. Now let's open back up Fusion 360. Now to apply your decal in Fusion 360, just go to this icon above, Title Decal. Now go to insert from my computer and locate your Photoshop document you created and hit open. Now select where you want to where you want to display it. So if I want to display it here, I'll just click that face. Now I can rotate it with these uh, widgets. So I can scale it as well. So it's kind of similar to importing a reference image. And once you're satisfied, just hit OK. There it is. Now really quick, I just want to show you guys how to create this circular text, just in case you guys are wondering how to do that. I'm going to open back up Photoshop really quick. I'm just going to delete this layer and let's start another one. So you're going to go down here, I'm going to select the ellipse tool, hold shift, and you can just drag in with the left mouse button pressed and then let go. And go up here to path and just ensure this path is set because usually I think it's set to shape to so ensure path is on. Now go to text so you can hold that down. You can choose horizontal type and just select. Once you see this icon change into this little weird shape, just click it once and you can just type in whatever. I'll type in fusion on a circle. Hit it check mark at the top to finalize it and there you go oh would you look at that <laughs> yeah well would you look at that all right guys so when i want to start rendering i just change the design ui from design to render and i go to the render settings right here now first things first i like to change the color of the background and i'll choose something like i'll choose blue some odd reason I'll choose it right now. I'll choose the blue color, hit apply, then hit OK. And um, if you want your object to float without having having it on the ground, you can just uncheck this ground plane. But I'm going to have it checked because I like it. Um, I don't want it to have reflections, so I'm going to leave that unchecked as well. Um, the focal length, I usually keep around uh, 90 millimeters. So once I hit render, you'll see it stays the same. And for blur, I keep it at around 0 0.019. So it blurs out pretty much everything from behind this line. 
And also, it's good to keep note that Fusion uses an IPR renderer, so the longer you leave it uh, untouched and unmoved, uh, it's going to keep rendering and get rid of some of those hot pixels you get. And uh, it just makes the quality a lot better. And as you can see right now, uh, this looks pretty pretty good for you know a Fusion render. This looks really good just for like a concept. It looks realistic. We got some uh, with the focal point up here. We got the blurriness in the background. And if you want to change the blurriness, you can always just slide this blurriness up or down. And you don't want it too high though, because uh, the slightest move will blur blur out the whole image you got here. All right, guys. So notice the blue arrows clicked. So this green dots over there, and that makes this area a little bit more blurry. Now, wherever you select the focal point or the center of focus to be, that's what's going to be less blurry. It's just common knowledge, guys. So the background's blurred out now. And that's always something good you can add to give it that touch of realism. Now, this is the focal lens. So if you slide this slider uh, right and left, it changes the perspective. And once you're satisfied, just leave it somewhere. And if you want to turn it off, just go to the bottom to display settings and go to camera change it back to orthographic and this will disable any perspective just change it back so just keep that in mind you can change the exposure here if you want it to be a little bit brighter a little darker um, for the environments you can actually turn the environment if you want it on I like to have solid color because it looks more professional in my opinion uh, here how it looks with the environment and you can adjust the environment's position by selecting this icon and you can rotate the HDRI. So this one looks pretty good. This is a good uh, a good background. It looks, this looks really good too. So it looks like this is actually sitting on top of a backdrop. All right, guys, something else I think that's worth mentioning is say you use all the Fusion 360 HDRIs and the boring, you don't want to use them anymore, and you don't want to use the downloadable ones. You can also import your own from Replace Custom Environment to select this icon here and go to your directory where you stored your HDRIs or downloaded them, and you can just choose your EXR file and um, import them. And I don't want to take too long in this video since it's already kind of long, so I'm just going to end it here. But this is how you do it.